It's almost the end of the year, and I don't know about you, but I've spent the majority of 2023 trying to improve my skills in the Fusion page, because let's be honest, the Fusion page can be super confusing. I just spit. That being said, I think I've come a long way, but there are some things I wish I knew when I first started. So here are five tips that will help you get started in Fusion without getting super confused. Let's start out with an easy one. It's gonna sound stupid at first, but bear with me. Ready? Every node does one job and one job only. Now, technically, this isn't 100% true. There are certain nodes, like the merge node, that can do more than one thing at a time. But if you're just starting out, in order to keep from confusing yourself, I highly recommend going with a one node per job setup. That way, if something gets wonky down the line, you'll know exactly which node needs to be adjusted. Let's look at an example. So I'm here in Fusion and I've got a very simple composition going. It's just a background with a smiley face on top of it. And this smiley face is way too big. I wanna make it smaller. I wanna move it around. Now, I could go into my merge node and I've got some transform controls here and I could bring down the size. I could move it around a little bit if I wanted to. And that's fine, you can do that. The problem is if this composition gets much bigger and then I wanna go back and change the size of this smiley face or I wanna do something else to it, I have to remember that not only did I use this merge as a merge, I also used it as a transform. And the much easier way to do this is to go with the one node one job mentality. So if I bring this back to center, I bring the size back up. Instead of using the merge node, what I can do is select my smiley face and we'll just add a transform to it. And now we've got a transform in between my smiley face and my merge. And I can use that transform node to resize or move around. And that way, when it's much later and I wanna do something else, I can more easily remember that I use the transform node to transform the smiley face. Doesn't seem like a big deal on a small composition like this, but on larger compositions, one node, one job, makes it a whole lot easier to keep track of. Okay, moving on to rule number two. Well, it's not really a rule, more just something to keep in mind. Anyway, here it is. The resolution of your fusion compositions will be set by the first input item in your composition. To understand this a little better, let's talk about what an input item is. An input item is a piece of media, like footage or images. They can also be things like backgrounds or particles. Basically, an input item is anything that you can apply masks and effects to. And the resolution of the first input item in your flow, by the way, that's what it's called. All the nodes in between your first node and your media out node, put it all together, it's called a flow. Generally dictates the resolution of your entire composition. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and look at an example. So I'm in a brand new fusion composition here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take an image from my media pool. We're gonna bring it into our node graph and we're gonna connect the image to our media out node. And if we come up here and look in the top right hand corner of our image, you'll see that the resolution of our final composition is 8216 by 5477. And the reason why that is, is because that's the resolution of this image. Even though the project settings of this project is 1920 by 1080p, the first input item determines the resolution of your composition. Now, if we were to break this connection, we'll leave this image here for now. But what we're gonna do is bring down a background node and bring that into our composition and we'll connect that to media out. Background nodes automatically size itself according to your project settings. So if we zoom in a little bit over here, we can see that we've got 1920 by 1080 as our final composition resolution and if we merge our image over our background, our resolution doesn't change. It's still 1920 by 1080p. And that's because the first input item in our composition, this background is what's determining the resolution. If we switched that, 
and we took this merge out, broke this, and let's say we connected our image back to our media out. You'll see our resolution again is 82, 16 by 54, 77. And we merge our background over our image. You'll see we still have 82, 16 by 54, 77. So whatever that first input item is in your composition, whether it's an image or a background or a piece of footage, whatever the resolution of that very first input item is, will in most cases determine the resolution of your final composition. Before we go on, can I just say something about Fusion? Actually, can I just say something about compositing in general? It's really time consuming. Building out effects takes time. Building motion graphics takes time. It all just takes time. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I just don't have the time to build effects and eye-catching titles and motion graphics and all that other stuff that makes videos more interesting. And that's why I love today's sponsor, Motion Array. See, Motion Array is this huge marketplace of templates, presets, effects, motion graphics, basically anything you need to take your videos to the next level, no matter what editing software you use. Plus, they've recently launched plugins that you can install directly to your NLE. We're talking plugins for color grading, keying, particles, and a whole lot more. And the best thing is, if you use DaVinci Resolve, you can use those plugins in both the edit and the Fusion page. Motion Array is both monthly and annual plans available, and both of them give you unlimited downloads on as many assets as you want, and an unlimited license, meaning you can use them wherever you want, whenever you want. So if you're looking for a way to speed up your video editing and take your videos to the next level, click the link below and sign up today to get $50 off an annual plan. Thanks so much to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to Fusion. Next up, let's talk about layers. One thing that trips people up the most, especially people who are used to layer-based compositing software like After Effects, Apple Motion and Photoshop is the fact that there don't appear to be layers. But here's the big secret. Fusion is no different. You're still working with layers. I mean, that's what compositing is, right? Putting things on top of other things and doing stuff to those things so it all looks like one big thing. So here's the question. How do you add layers in Fusion? Well, that's exactly what merge nodes do. Let's take a look. So here in Fusion, I've got a background node going into media out, and this is the beginning of my composition. What I want to do now is add a new layer. I want to place an image on top of this background, and then I'm gonna add a second layer where I'm adding a smiley face on top of the image. And the way we do that is by adding a merge node. Now, there are a couple ways to add merge nodes. You can either select what you want to merge with and come up to your toolbar and just select merge node. It's this one right here, a little rectangle with an arrow. We can select that. And now we've got a merge node in our composition. And then from there we can connect whatever we want. The other way that we can do that is by grabbing whatever we want to merge on top of our background. And we can come down and bring it into our node graph and we can just connect the output of our new item with the output of our old item. And there you go. Now we have our smiley face. But remember, I wanted the smiley face to be on top of the image and the image to be on top of the background. So what we're going to do is we're gonna slide this over a little bit and we're going to grab our image and bring that into our node graph. And we're going to merge our image over our background and now we have our background, the next layer is our image, and the next layer after that is our smiley face. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind with merge nodes, this trips a lot of people up, but if you take a look at the merge node, you'll see we've got three different color arrows going into our merge node. We've got orange, we've got green, and we've got blue. Now, no matter how many merge nodes you use, no matter where you put it in your composition, this is always the same. The orange is going to be your background or your bottom layer, and your green arrow is going to be your foreground. Blue is masks, we're not gonna talk about that today, but orange is background, green is foreground. So you see we've got 
Our background is our bottom layer. And then we've got our image as our next layer. And then we've got that coming into this merge node. This is the background. This image is the background of the next merge and our smiley face is the foreground. So we've got layer one, layer two, and layer three. See? Layers. The next thing you need to know about Fusion is regarding effects. There are a lot of effects in Fusion and they all do different things, but one universal truth to effects is the fact that when they are applied, they affect every input item upstream from them in the flow, making the position of the effect very important. Cool? Back to Fusion. Okay, so I've got a background node. I've got an image merged on top of that background node, and I've got my smiley face merged on top of my image. Now from here, I want to add a transform node because my smiley face is a little bit too big, but I need to be careful on where I put this transform node. See, if I place my transform node, grab it right here from the toolbar, if I put it right here at the end of my composition and I come down and I bring down the size, it's gonna bring down the size everything that's upstream from it. So it is resizing the background, it's resizing the media into, which is my image, it's resizing my smiley face, it's resizing everything, and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click on this transform and I'm going to break that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect it in between my smiley face and my merge. And now if I play around with the size, we're only affecting the smiley face. So that's one thing to keep in mind about effects. They will always affect everything that's upstream from them in your flow. If I wanted to, let's say, blur out this sunset here, I could add a blur in between the image and the merge, and that way it's only blurring the image, and I can bring up my blur size. And there we go. The last thing you need to know about Fusion is that it's non-destructive. If you add an effect to your flow that doesn't do what you want it to do, you can always delete that effect or move it to a different part of your flow. It won't break your footage, which is great for beginners because you can keep working at it until you get the result you're working for without having to worry about permanently messing everything up. So don't worry. You've got this. Now, if you're ready to dive into Fusion, but you feel like you might need a little help, I've got you covered. I have a video walking through a simple composite and I've made the assets available for download so you can follow along step by step. You can check that out right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.